what am I doing here? This is UFC. And I'm a UFC fighter. Now I'm um, currently in Amsterdam. Enjoying time with my family, with my friends. Um, still on my house here. She just bought a new one. And uh, yeah, you know, I like to like to watch the fights. Glasgow is like one hour flight away. I'm here with my good buddy, Mr. Pepper Camp. So we're just spending some holiday time watching the fights. Oh, so we've got a couple of weeks. Like, what fight are you most looking forward to on the card? Well, um, the whole main card. You know, I just like that. I, I became a fan of just watching fights, learning. You can always learn. And, um, yeah, I have to say the Scottish fans are um, super enthusiastic. So that's always fun, too. And uh, yeah, just enjoying the, the atmosphere, the vibe. Alistair, it's been a couple of weeks since the fight against Fabrizio for team. Um, it's been eight days. eight days. Eight days, sorry. Mm. Excuse me. Um, reflection period now. You, uh, have you had a chance to look back over the fight? Uh, yeah, I looked. I, I watched it actually once. Clear first two and a half rounds. I'm just controlling the fight. I'm scoring more points. Um, yeah, the last half of the last round is clearly his. I'm actually doing damage control there. I'm not allowing him to pass my guard. I'm keeping him in between my legs because I know, you know, you're controlling his head. There's no hard punches there. I know Fabrice is also not known for his uh, ground and pound. So I'm just uh, riding it out. Um, you know, you're fighting a top, top ace fighter. Fabrizio is a, is a former UC champion. You have to kind of sometimes be smart, which is not the most attractive way of fighting. But um, again, you know, you're fighting a, a top quality fighter and uh, sometimes you have to use your brain instead of your bra. How far away do you think you're obviously, you know, you lost to Stipe and you, you bounce back. What do you have to get to get back up to that title shot? Well, I think we're right there. Um, the only thing that, that, that could be in my way, I believe, is uh, Francis Nagu. He has, I believe, a nine-fight winning streak. You know, I'm going to be honest. Um, what he has going for him is a nine-fight winning streak. Nine fights is nine fights. I have two fights. What he had, does not has going for him is uh, he has not faced any top-quality opponents. So those, those nine fights have basically been... I mean, the, the only name in that list is uh, Andre Olaski, who is currently riding a five... Uh, fight losing streak, so that's not really something to write home about. Um, and the other thing that he has against him is he's fighting JDS. JDS is top five. He's gonna give him a, a really hard time. And and to be honest, I don't think France is gonna win win that fight. Anything can happen, right? And we're always wanting that that X factor. Or, sorry, we always want that surprise. So maybe he can generate that surprise. But um, you know, JDS he always comes back strong. Right? He bounces back every time strong. I expect him to do that uh, again. And when that happens, nothing stands in the way of my title shot. How do you think JDS is going to win? How he's going to win? I think he's going to win by K. That's what he does, right? He, but let's not underestimate his ground game. He has everything. He's got takedowns. He has kicks now, right? The the, the, the spinning axe kicks. He's got uh, he's got submission game. Even though he's not showing it, he has it. Given your assessment, if obviously Nagano does beat JDS, he's obviously a legitimate top uh, heavyweight in the UFC. Do you think? Well, Francis is a legitimate heavyweight anyway. He is fighting JDS, right? He's ranked, uh, I don't know what his rank is, but he's uh, right in there, top 10, so he's legitimate already. Uh, but I just, don't, I just don't see him beat JDS. I just think JDS is going to be too slick, uh, yeah, too seasoned, too tough, great cardio. Is it five rounds, by the way? Anybody know that? It's uh, August 15th, has main event, so it's going to be yeah, five rounds. Francis, first five rounder. Yeah, it's going to be really hard for him. Don't you think, though, with the UFC rankings, you're currently ranked number one. And in most other sports, if you're ranked number one, you should be legitimately you know, there for a, for a title shot. That's what the rankings are supposed to be there for. So you're ranked number one, so why aren't you getting the title shot? Well, um, nobody's saying I'm not getting it, but uh, I'm ranked one. It's, uh, it's slowly drifting towards me, gliding towards me. Um, you gotta remain humble and you gotta look at the facts. Francis has nine fight winning streak. But again, you know, he has no big names on his list and he's gonna fight his first big name this time, and that's JDS. And um, yeah, I think JDS uh, should be able to get that one with his experience and his power and his, uh, and his game planning. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll see what's next. Last week, um, Gegard Nassassi signed for Bellator. Uh, obviously, a lot of guys are now starting to move over there. You're very familiar with Scott Coker. Um, why do you think there are some guys now that are looking to A, explore free agency, and then B, also signing with Bellator? Well, that is for everybody a very personal question. Um, 
I think it all comes down, down to financials in the end. Um, yeah, and, and, and I, I think Gegert uh, is, is an excellent fighter. He's a uh, high level, uh, you know, he's, he's, I, I, we share kind of parallels. I've been a little bit more um, longer active, but we had our career in Japan in Pride and later in a Dream. Uh, great fighter, but I think in the end it's a personal question you have to ask him. Yeah, it probably has to do with financials. I think his uh, division was a little bit locked up as well. Maybe he has a little bit of difficulty with that as well. But um, yeah, that's what free agency is for. Alistair, um, yeah. and if or when you get back to that world title shot against Stipe Miocic, uh, what can you do differently in the fight? What Have you looked back at that fight as well? Have you uh, a clear game plan in your mind that you're going to execute against Stipe? Well, it's going to be different. I'm, uh, I'm a lot fitter, I'm a lot stronger now. Uh, ramped up my strength conditioning, fixed diet. You know, you always, after a loss, you always look at stuff to improve. We found a bunch of stuff. Uh, and we're doing it, and we come now. We now have two victories with the new uh, with the new stuff, so it's clearly working. And um, yeah, you know the the the, the holes that uh, that Steve exploited. He kind of you know he showed it. He displayed. It. That was definitely something that I needed to work on. Um, but now that I'm working on it, I definitely do think that the next fight with me and Steve is going to be different. It's going to be a different fight. I'm more fit. I'm more strong. And um, let's not forget, I was really close to beating him in the first one. Right? It was like an inch away. And how soon would you like to fight again? Uh, October, November, would be awesome. Uh, Dana, Dana White mentioned that he doesn't believe you should get the title shot next and you should fight one more. And obviously, looking at the heavyweight division, the only person that seems left for you that you haven't fought is Cain Velasquez. So, does that interest you? Yeah, that's also a possibility. Uh, you know, if, you're, if you want to become a champion, you should not shy away from any opponent. That's something that I would never do. Uh, sometimes timing-wise, it doesn't match up. Uh, but, you know, I want to fight again in October, November. If it's Kane, it's Kane. If it's Steep, it's Steep. You know, we're fit, we're healthy, we're coming. And, um, yeah, whatever. We just wrapped up with this massive international four-city tour for Mayweather McGregor. Um, was it awesome or was it awesome? It was a lot, it was it a lot was of fun. Awesome. Uh, yeah, well, talk to us about it. You I was there? in London. I was in London. Um, how did you take it all in? Uh, what were some of your highlights? And what did you think of that whole, I suppose, tour? It was a great tour, great uh, marketing by both. I think, um, you know, you, you can clearly hear that the fans are a little bit more on Conor McGregor's side, right? He's a little bit the people's uh, guy. I, I think Mayweather has something un uh, un uh, not likable to him. Uh, but he's a formidable boxer. Formidable boxer. Great record. I'm looking forward to that fight. Um, I could not give you a, an honest um, assessment who's going to take that. You know, I'm, an, I'm a UFC guy, so of course I'm going for Connor. It would be awesome if he can uh, create the upset. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult. I want to speak to you about that because you've got this massive history in MMA and, and you know, kickboxing. You're one of the biggest names in combat sports. You're seeing this crossover promotion now with the UFC and boxing. Why not have Alistair Overeem versus an Anthony Joshua? Is that something that you'd perhaps like to be interested in and create this big international blockbuster event? Well, let's not forget that I already did that, right? Or have you forgotten? You no, forgot. No, what forgotten. did I do? Well, you've been in K1. You've been a K1 champion. You've been a Dream champion. You've been a Strike Force champion. But listen, but the Strike Force and the Dream is MMA. Yep. But K1, uh, to me, was a crossover because yep. it's, of course, only uh, striking. You find the best strikes in the world. Uh, it actually came about because uh, <laughs> Butter came in, the, in my. <laughs> Cheers. Butter came in the, in the ring after my, I've, I beat Krokop and he started challenging me. And um, it's kind of funny how that went. The Japanese had their ways. I was going to get the rematch with Krokop for New Year's Eve. And then all of a sudden, two weeks before, yeah, that fight is not happening, but we have Butter Hari for you in a kickboxing match. Okay, strange. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? I'm trained. Let's go for it. And we went for it, and I beat him. And that actually kind of catapulted me into the K1. I never had the intention of doing it, but I kind of liked it. I loved it. And um, did, I didn't win the first uh, tournament, but I won the second one. But it was a great uh, experience. And um, it all came from, you know, by accident, per accident it came. But I liked it, and I believed in myself. I went for it, and uh, got me to kill the K1. I haven't forgotten what you've done. What I'm saying is, is in 2017... It bothers him. It bothers him. In 2017, you know, what <laughs> Mayweather and McGregor are doing right now, 
this would be a whole different beast. And considering how much of a big name Anthony Joshua is here in the UK, you're a European fighter too. I'm just saying it would make a, a blockbuster event and obviously probably the biggest payday of everyone's career. Well, I'll tell you something. Um, I don't shy away from challenges. Um, you know, does Anthony Joshua shy away from challenges? I don't know. He can come in the UFC. Uh, that, that would be great, right? To me, I'm not personally not looking for new challenges. I already had all that. My challenge is UFC Championship. You know, I'm right there. Uh, let's not forget Conor McGregor is the, the, the lightweight champion and the bantamweight champion. So he has, you know, he's, he's already at the, at the highest in the UFC. So for him to look elsewhere, it's like a, a, it's a natural, it's organic. For me, let me focus on UFC first before I start fly, floating around and do uh, other stuff. That for me is uh, the highest attainable and uh, boxing with whoever. They can come to UFC, but they're not going to do that. The UFC will be in Rotterdam. They're not going to come to UFC. <laughs> they're going to be boring. They're going to stay where they are. And the other thing is, why do we have to go to them? <coughs> we, I did it already. Why do I have to go into... Let him do his boxing thing. I'm going to do UFC. Let me focus on the UFC championship. And if he wants to fight, then he can come to me.